Today we are reading Vilab Kusumanjali, verse 89. And uh, Goranga Sundar, Sumiti, Jayananda, and everybody else. If you feel to share, then please stop me because it is so much more relishable when you are sharing something. Oh, Sadaye, merciful girl. When will you shyly take me far away from your girlfriends to a cave of Govardhan Hill to teach me beautiful songs in different tunes there. Oh, Sadaye, merciful girl, when Will you shyly take me far away from your girlfriends to a cave of Govardhan Hill to teach me beautiful songs in different tunes there? Explanations Sri Raghunath's heart is absorbed in the forms, qualities, and pastimes of his beloved deity. In the mood of a maidservant, he relishes Sri Sri Radha Mohan's sweetness. Radhe, Radhe, Radhe. We can stop here and to see. <clears throat> Sorry for my voice, I catch the cold. <clears throat> So Jayarandaji, in the introduction, he was speaking about Gopi Gita and the sweetness of Gopi Gita. And now here in Shivilapa Kusumanjali, we can hear Manjari Gita. How Manjaris are relishing the sweetness of Radha Mohan's love. This kind of Gita, Manjari Gita, is different in the mood. But the both of them, on their specific way, are relishing Radha Mohan's loving pastimes. Raghunath here, like Radha does is, he actually has direct visions of Radhika. And we, when we say direct visions, it means that he is directly is seeing her forms, like Baba said in the first sentence, qualities and pastimes. This is very unique position of Premika devotee. When Premika devotee has a direct darshan, like here Raghunath of Radharani, when he sees Radhika, 
all his senses are becoming the eyes. He's not that he is looking at Radhika with his transcendental eyes, but also he can hear the sense of hearing, smelling, tasting, and touching are becoming the eyes. This is mysterious. Think about Prema. So when devotee on that level enter in Samadhi, his realization, direct realization, is very vivid and deep. <clears throat> and it's splashing his heart to want more and more and more. And Raghunath in Manjari Bhava is relishing Radhika and her Mohan. And in Manjari Bhava, he is singing this song, beginning with addressing Radhika, O oh, Sadaye, merciful girl. You are merciful to everyone. This is your sweet Madhurya nature. Because you are embodiment of love, you are merciful, naturally. You are merciful always. It's not that sometimes you are merciful and then you are not. You are always in the flow of mercy, giving the flow of mercy. You are merciful to ordinary living beings. You are merciful to your beloved lover, Nagar. But you are also merciful to your girlfriends. And you are especially merciful to your beloved maidservants. And because you are especially merciful to your beloved maidservants, Manjaris, I'm praying to you with my pure heart and pure intense desire. Please take me in the topmost secret place, in the cave of Gordon, where the night pastimes are going, and teach me the most intimate songs, which are more intimate than Gopi Git. <laughs> So, this is the difference between Gopi Git and Manjari Git. Yeah. Because this Manjari Git is the essence of Radhika's teachings to only her Manjaris. Yeah. And Manjari is saying here, like Tulsi Manjari, you are shy in front of your Sakis. You are very good friends. You are sharing so beautiful jokes, um, situations. You understand each other so well. But in one point of your loving pastimes, you are becoming shy in front of them. And then you are taking your maidservant, your sweet Dasi, with the hands, and bringing out of the circle of the gopis in the cave to teach personally specific gitas songs which only manjari knows to sing and only manjari is allowed to listen and only krishna He's blessed. He's blessed to listen to such kind of songs. Because these kind of songs increases his desire the most. And this is the most confidential Gita. Because it's directly spoken from Radhika's heart. 
to Manjari's heart. Radhika is speaking also to the hearts of their friends, uh, her girlfriends. <clears throat> but this kind of song is not so intimate when he is speaking and singing from the, her heart directly to the heart of Manjaris. Because Manjaris are Bhavola Sarati, like Jananaji is always explaining so nicely. And they are the interesting only for the benefit of Radhika and her lover. So when Raghunath is praying, he is praying from his heart. And this is the song because when we are praying from the mind, this is not the song. It's good, very good, but it's not the song. Real song is full of waves of emotions which are coming from heart. And this kind of song has to be infused. No one can learn by <laughs> heart, by the mind. Or so. This kind of song has to be infused. And Radhika is infusing these songs in the hearts of Kinkaris. And because of that, when Raghunath see Radhika in direct vision, all his senses are becoming the eyes. Mm -hmm. It's not easy to understand because prema is not possible to understand. We, we should only relish the prema by the mercy. But somehow, like Gorgovinda said, we are madmen and we are talking about something which is completely out of us. But it helps us to build our nishta for the goal. So when Raghunath hear the voice, sweet singing or talking <clears throat> of Srimati Radharani, then all his senses becoming the ears. This is why it's so intense. His feeling is all senses by the arrangement of prema bhakti and yogama, or better to say, by the arrangement of hladini shakti. All senses are becoming one. And when the Raghunath is hearing the voice, singing, or different sounds of Swamini, all his senses are becoming the ears and he's drinking. Same thing is with another senses. When he smell the Radhika's body, all his senses are becoming the nose. When he's eating Radhika's Adharamrita, Prashad, all his senses are becoming the thunk. And this is amazing. This is amazing. Adbut. And brings devotee on completely another level beyond material conception of life. But when this kind of vision disappears, Then Raghunath is starting to sing his Manjari Bhava Gita through his crying. And he is offering his tears like a flowers to beloved Swamini, which is watered with these Anjalis, with these tears. So I just wanted to, to say a little bit about this position of Raghunath. <clears throat> 
and Premika devotees because last Saturday and Sunday we were talking <coughs> about Prema, Prema Tattva, and the importance of understanding and feeling what is the Prema. And now we have real, real example what does it mean in the daily life of devotee to be on the Prema level. To be completely 24-7, like Guru Dev is saying, absorbed in a Prema. By meditation on this goal, Prema is becoming the fifth goal established in the heart, not like a theory, but established in the heart of devotee like the goal. Because he has living example of Prema Tattva. And we need living examples of Prema. Otherwise, how we will continue to grow? Because this Prema is based on very strong Mamata. I am yours and you are mine. On the level of Prem, in the heart of Premika devotee, this is so strongly as fixed. These emotions, you are mine and I am yours, much more than on the other levels like a Baba. And because of that, I am yours and you are mine, he is able to relish completely the lila and to receive the mercy to enter in the lila. Prema brings devotee directly to the lila. And when he is in the lila, with all his senses, with all his attachments, feelings, hearts, he is relishing his position of maidservant in that lila. And then, when he come out from this, he is able to sing his own personal loving song. Very intimate song. Because the subject is the song. <laughs> but the song of the heart. In the proper mood. To whom I am singing. To her who already taught me how to sing. So this is the exchange of love. Between Radhika and Manjari who is helping then her lover, and so on and so on in the Lila, Baba will explain later on. And this is specific situation which is happening only in Vrindavan. Vrindavan is the place of sweetness. Vrindavan is the place of singing and dancing, not philosophy. Radhika is teaching Manjari, not philosophy here. Mm. No one is interested in Vedic meters. <laughs> but, like it said somewhere, every word is sung, but from which Bhava? And every step is dance, but from which bow? And this is possible only in the sweet Vrindavan, where the sweetness pervades everything. And Prema, 
the Mahabhava Prem is allowing devotees for Hladini Shakti, Radhika personally, the devotees relish the sweetness. Radhe, sorry. In the mood of a maidservant, he relishes Shri Shri Radha Mohan's sweetness. Radha. Everything is clear. I made complicated, sorry. <laughs> now you open our eyes to mm. see this. How much Swamini loves her intimate maidservant is known through the prayer in this verse. Without me even wanting it, Swamini is accepting me as one of her own. From this, I understand that she loves me. Without me even wanting it, Swamini is so merciful to take me along to a cave of Govardhan Hill to teach me divine songs with different tunes and meters. Tunes are important because they are mellows. We can sing so nicely and our friend can sing also nicely. But if we are not in the same tune, it's not giving the pleasure to the listeners. So the most important thing is to first tune ourselves. Mm. And this is Taiba. Tune ourselves properly in desired goal. And how to tune myself? By following the tune of those who are already and Raghunath is giving us here the way how we can slowly tune our feelings, our thoughts, our activities in the mood of Manjari Bhav. He is showing the way, but many times and very often it's not so clear to us to feel the tune only from the verses. So we need an, <clears throat> another help, another Manjari Gita, mm. commentary of those who understand his tune. Because they are explaining a little bit clear. And this is the way how Divya Gyan or this transcendental mood and knowledge and feelings is trans transferred from heart to heart. And this is the reason why Gurudev, as I understand, maybe I'm wrong, is talking about that only way to understand Rupa Manjari, Rupa Goswami, is through the Raghunath. So only the way how we can properly understand Raghunath like a Tulsi Manjari, is by tuning our hearts, chitta, rit, with the hearts of those who are already on that position. And Baba, Ananta Das Babaji, here in this commentary, and especially with the help of our Gurudev, who is also giving us the key how to understand Ananta Das Babaji. Can you? I cannot imagine. Personally, I don't have such capacity. I cannot imagine that I will understand anything 
especially deep levels of Ananta Babaji's words without help of my Guru Dev. I will be surprised uh, and it will be very, very nice because I never read such kind of commentaries. But what Guru Dev established in the heart of mine is helping me at least just a little bit to go deeper in this Manjari Gita. Because my Guru Dev is giving his Manjari Gita in my heart. He is giving Manjari Gita through his mouth, Mukha Padma. Not other Gitas, Manjari Gita in my heart. And through this Manjari Gita from his heart, he is giving Diksha mantras in the mood of Manjari Gita. So we need a lot of Manjari Gitas in the same tune. And sometimes it's not enough only to listen one Manjari Gita, because I don't have capacity. I, I'm very sanctuary. But we need strong Manjari circle that everyone is singing his Manjari Gita so concentrating, so condensed, that finally one lifetime, maybe my heart will start to accept this kind of tune. Even if I don't want. Sure. And Baba is saying here, without me even wanting it, Swamini accepting me. <laughs> Without even wanting me, Swamini mercifully taking me along in the cave. And she is taking me like her own. This is so important, my her own, because I accepted her like my own. And this is the tune, perfect tune. Then this tune can go in the different waves, but never break this tune. High waves, same tune. Low waves, same tune. Clashing the waves, same tune. And this Manjari Gita will help me to be free from Gita of this world. Song. Illusory song. But sometimes so attractive for my materialistic senses. And Raghunath is saying here, I want that all my senses are relishing your form, your qualities, and your lilas, where all these forms, names, and qualities will be present. This Manjari Gita I want to listen. This Gita is writing Ananta Das Babaji, and this Gita is writing and singing Raguna Das Goswami. And this Gita is so sweet when it's coming from the mouth of my beloved Gurudev. It's came, what can we do? Shyly, 
she takes me far away from her girlfriends to a cave of Govardhan Hill to teach me singing. Why should she be shy? Her sama prana sakis are not strangers to her. But in front of her sakis, she cannot teach all kinds of songs. These songs are not ordinary songs. Dipyagyam. They are divine songs. Swamini is shy because she knows that her girlfriends understand that she will teach Tulsi intimate songs about her love affairs with Shama. These songs are not meant for the Saki's ears because they will make them mock Swamini. Hmm. Radhe, these songs are not meant for Saki's ears. Hmm. It's forbidden for them. Mm -hmm. They are not allowed to listen. And this is Divya Gana, <clears throat> Divya Gana, Gurudev, few few weeks ago explained difference between Gana and Sankirtana. Gana, when Gana is singing, is describing Lila. It's very confidential and most singing. And Sankirtana is loud singing. in the mood of separation. But when the Gana is singing, it means that confidential situation, confidential Lila is going on. And this Gana is describing this, and this Gana is re uh, nourishing this. And this Gana has a specific tune Specific tune, not musical tune. Emotional, bhavika tune. Because when we think about music, we always think about musical to tunes. Yes, this is right in material world. But in Vraj, everything is a sweet tune of sweet emotions. Every melody brings immediately Lila. Embodiment, each Raga is embodiment of Lila. So this kind of special Gana, Divya Gana, is, is not for the Saki's ears. So we should understand what is for our ears. And this Gana is the most confidential item of devotional service because it's Manjari Gita Gana.
these confidential and wonderful songs cannot be heard by anyone else but Swamini's most intimate maidservants. They are meant to be sung by Tulsi while Swamini is alone with Sham and Sham has fainted out of amorous ecstasy. With their extraordinary beauty and sweetness, the Bracha Sundaris are able to astonish Sri Krishna. With their extraordinary beauty and sweetness, <coughs> The Bracha Sundaris are able to astonish Sri Krishna. Hence, <coughs> their love is called Samartha Rati. The love of a pure devotee has such extraordinary power and glory that it astonishes Sri Krishna. The love of the Braja Sundaris is of the highest class. Hence, their Samartarati is most astonishing. Can somebody explain the meaning of Samartarati? Will happen clear. You read, go on. Hmm. The love of the Braja Sundaris is of the highest class. Hence, their Samartha Rati is most astonishing. The sweetness of the love of Srimati Radharani, who is endowed with Madhanakya Mahabhav, is astonishing Krishna so much that it makes him faint. Even Swamini is then baffled and unable to find a means to reawaken him. Only her maidservants that are well trained in the art of singing divine songs are able to break this swoon. No one else. This is what distinguishes the kinkaris from the sakis. 
This is the very confidential service rendered by the maid servants. One day, Radhika and Shama are playing together in a kunja when Shama faints out of ecstasy. No matter what Swamini tries, she cannot bring Krishna back to his senses. The boat-like mind of enchanting Mohan has sunk in the bottomless ocean of Sri Radhika's beauty and sweetness. Swamini is desperate. She cannot find anyone who can pull Mohan out of this deep ocean-like swoon. Then Tulsi, who sits outside with her back against the wall of the Kunja, begins to sing a beautiful song. When Mohan hears the song about Swamini's sweetness, he slowly comes back to his senses and becomes fit again to continue the love play. These songs cannot be taught in the presence of the Sakis. Therefore, they are taught within the caves of Govardhan Hill. The subject of these songs are the various pastimes of Rasa Raj, Sri Krishna, and Madanakya Mahabhavati, Sri Radha. Sri Radhika herself is the subject of these songs, so she cannot sing it herself to bring Krishna back to life. A third person is necessary. And the maidservant of Sri Radha is the most fitting person to do it. Of all maidservants, Tulsi is again most intimate with Sri Radhika. <coughs> so Swamini calls her into a cave of Govardhan Hill to teach her these intimate songs in different tunes. This is the limit of human perfection, the great gift of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Without Hava, 
Bhava means feelings. One cannot taste rasa, spiritual flavor. Without rasa, there can be no development of bhava. And without bhava and rasa, there can be no ananda. Again. Without power, feelings, one cannot taste rasa, spiritual flavor. Without rasa, there can be no development of power. And without bhava and rasa, there can be no ananda. Radhe, Radhe, if you continue, then in the next two sentences also is explanation. This is a well-known truth. If we try to realize the purport of these words, then we can understand that even a slightest drop from the stream of topmost transcendental bliss that constantly floats from the fountainhead of all universal causes, Mahabhava Radha, embraced by Maharasa Krishna, is keeping the whole world alive. The main item that is to be ascertained from the Vedic scriptures was described in Sriman Bhagavat, which is the essence of the Vedanta. According to the Bhagavata, the limit of attainment is the Mahabhava of the gopis in the Rasa Lila. A human being is unable to advance or to know anything beyond this. If anyone can reveal anything beyond this, then he cannot be anyone else but the supreme absolute truth, God himself. That should be known for sure. <laughs> That confidential manjari bhav 
which is not even found by searching through the Rasa Lila chapters of Srimad Bhagavat, is the merciful gift of Sri Sri Krishna Chaitanya Deva, who is the combined form of Rasa Raja, Krishna, the king of relishers, and Mahabhava, Radhika, the supreme love, and its manifestation and preaching has come through the acharyas who took shelter of his lotus feet. Radhika, can I ask a question? Because this paragraph was so condensed and deep and many points here. I, I just I just want to ask questions so we can turn maybe and learn from you, Gurdi, the depth of this. What I understand in this sentence that without bhava, one cannot taste rasa. And that without rasa, there can be no development of bhava. And without that, together, bhava and rasa, there can be no ananda. That is the relationship of Radha and Mohan is giving, you know, the living entity everything that it needs to flourish not only in this material world as an embodied person who is always looking for happiness, but also the mercy of Radha and Mohan is our, or let's say the happiness of Radha and Mohan, and how to increase that by bringing them together and serving them when they are together. That is the topmost uh, Ananda also for the Manjaris, because they always want to see them embraced. That is the highest happiness, because they are only serving Mahabhav and Maharas. And the highest service is how to bring them together, that they are always living in their ecstatic embrace, and from that embrace, the whole universe is existing. That's what it says. It's keeping the whole world alive. So that's very amazing also. It's always a deep point for meditation. You are right. I agree. But I want to add something. Yeah, the thing is this, the read again, yeah. Without bhava… This bhava is manjari bhava. Hmm. Bhava is manjari bhava. If I have no manjari bhava and I am not fixed there, but I will get rasa. Then different rasa can come. The moment I come out from the Manjari Bhava, different rasa. That Bhava is a Manjari Bhava. Go on. Without Bhava, one cannot taste rasa. Rasa. This rasa from Manjari is Radhika. She is very happy only and juicy when the Swami is there. Go on. Without rasa, there can be no development of no. bhava. 
Bhava will not grow. When the Bhava of Mandiri is not fixed with Radhika, her Samni again, Bhava will not grow. So we need all the time to be there in that Bhava. Hmm. And without Bhava and Rasa, there can be no Ananda. Ananda here is with her. Manjari when bring to Radhika to Krishna. Mm -hmm. This is Ananda. <coughs> you see. In Manjari, huh? This feeling come to me, I share it. After that, what you are explaining is also beautiful. Mm. But in Manjari, we have to practice. <coughs> Manjari cannot feel any rasa without her sound. Mm. This is the beauty of Mandiri. Huh? Mm. <coughs> her, her, her rasa is Swami. Everything is there. She has no rasa in Krishna. Totally fixed with Radha. <coughs> Gurudev, mm -hmm. can I share something mm -hmm. on this point? Mm -hmm. Radha Radha, um, the last days, there is one verse which is always being in my head, and I felt it just very much um, feels into what you were just sharing, Gurudev, and maybe you can also expand on this. So, there is the rasa dance is happening and radha and krishna are in the center and the gopis are relishing that rasa dance gurudev and watching but the manjaris are not watching they're only watching the feet of radharani and not even the feet they're watching the imprints of the feet on the dust and then I was feeling right now when you were saying that the only Rasa and Ananda the Manjari get is watching the feet of Radharani and her ankle bells jingling. So means that they have no interest in the Rasa dance in Krishna. They have only interest in their Swamini's uh, ankle bells and her feet. And then I, and then it was saying that they don't look anywhere else. And then I was like, wow. Actually, if we only focus on her feet, we get everything. We don't have to look here and there anymore. So, Gurudev, so this is what, what you were also saying, that we are, the Manjuris get their rasa and development of their bhava when exclusively focusing on Swamini and, and her lotus feet. <laughs> Beautiful. Ananda is only coming for Radharani, but Manjari has an Ananda when he sees my Swami is meeting with his lover, then she feels. A lover come to see my son. One thing more. <coughs> Samartharati. And one is Bhavulasat. 
गोपी है सामर्थ रहती बट मंजरी हैज भावलास इट शी डोंट वॉन्ट एनी सामर्थ फॉर एनी क्वालिफिकेशन फॉर हर सर्विस शी इज हैपी विथ हर स्वामी है That is how last Sunday. <laughs> And samartha rati means capabilities to catch Krishna. That is samartha rati. They are samartha. They they create capability by decree. Somebody influencing everything. He got all capabilities. Uh, here, Baba want to show us about the samartha rati what the gopi has. We effort to achieve something. And Manjiri has no, no any samartha capability, but she is living in her bhav feeling to always with her rasa. So many she juicy, she feel juicy when she see to to the soul has the body. And body soul is Radhika for her. She is the soul of her body soul. We cannot live without that. She feel Radha when she see soul see her soul. Our Samartha Rati when soul see super soul. Mm-hmm. And soul want to attract super soul. Mm-hmm. This is samartha rati and bhav lasati. Soul want to only to be with soul and to release his soul feelings. Mm-hmm. That is bhav. Then I will say the soul has a soul my body has a soul na anya soul has a soul means my body has a soul and that soul has soul that soul body as one so that is run allah the name she is the soul of soul of and soul of the soul super soul is krishna so is beyond bodily consciousness <laughs> All divinity is not material. Anything. Okay. Yeah. 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 One cannot taste rasa without rasa there can be no development of bhava 
and without bhava and rasa, there can be no ananda. <laughs> This is a well-known truth. <laughs> if we try to realize the purport of these words, then we can understand that even a slightest drop from the stream of topmost transcendental bliss that constantly floats from the fountainhead of all universal causes, Mahabhava, Radha, embraced by Maharasa, Krishna, is keeping the whole world alive. Mm. Again, this line. Mm. If we try to realize the purport of these words, then we can understand that even a slightest drop from the stream of topmost transcendental bliss that constantly floats from the fountainhead of all universal causes, Mahabhava, yeah. Radha, embraced by Maharasa, Krishna, wow. is keeping the whole world alive. Yeah, this is unity. No good if I didn't understand this. I only understand that the fountainhead of all universal causes is Mahabhava embraced by Maharasa and it's keeping the whole world alive. So maybe you can help with some more understanding or deeper feelings to that. The line is, you see, this is the line. Read, read. Mm. Uh, even a slightest drop from the stream of topmost transcendental bliss that constantly floats from the fountainhead of all universal causes Mahabhava Radha From Mahabha. Go on. embraced by Maharasa Krishna yes, by is keeping the whole world alive. Yeah. Is that Mahamantra Gurudev? This is Ananda. They are feeling is seeing Ananda. And this is Mahamantra, everything is there. And this is Radha Kund also our Acharyas. Float flowing always to Krishna. Mm -hmm. But this Even, the source is Radhika, mm. not Krishna. This Ananda source, and who can see? The Bhava can see. The our Manjari Bhava can see this. If we are practicing in Manjari Bhava, it will become crystal clear. Read again, read all from beginning to here. Without Pava feelings, one cannot taste rasa, spiritual flavor. 
without rasa, there can be no development of power. If the Swami is not in my mind or not practicing with her, then my bhava will finish. Mm -hmm. Bhava will not grow. We are the shadow of Swami. Always we have to take it. The moment I will forget, I will out of my feeling. Mm -hmm. And without Pava and Rasa, there can be no Ananda. Why Bhav is important? Because without Dasi, my Swami not move any place. She need one helper. So Manjari Bhava, why Manjari Bhava? This Dasi Bhava is important to feel it and see it. Live in this consciousness. <laughs> This is a well known truth. Well known truth from Manjari. <laughs> this is the limit of human perfection, the great gift of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. No voice again, repeat. This is the this is the limit of human perfection, the great gift of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Yes. If we try to realize the purport of these words, then we can understand that even a slightest drop from the stream of topmost transcendental bliss that constantly floats from the fountainhead of all universal causes, Mahabhava, embraced by Maharasa. Is keeping Rasovaisa Maharasa. Rasovaisa is Krishna. Oh. And Rasa Sar is Radhi. Sar is the wire of that Rasa Vaisa Sara Reservoir. Yeah. Mahabhava Radha, embraced by Maharasa Krishna, is keeping the whole world alive. Keeping the whole world alive. Mm -hmm. <coughs> uh, Dev, may I ask a question? Mm. This one drop of the embrace of Radha and Krishna keeps the, this world alive. So this one drop, we can we can see that these are also like the Mahajans and our Gurudev who is sharing the gift of Radha and Krishna to enter there. It's like one drop keeping the whole life, whole life in the world. Manjari. 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 Yes. What the feeling? Right. Only in feeling. Yes. Maybe in my room. 
Yes. But manjari has to be there. Manjari has to be there. Manjari bhava. That has to be seen. Yeah. And who live in the feeling, he can understand Krishna's heart. How is it? Understand if I have no feeling. <laughs> so feeling to be a Radha Dasi is important. Mm. This whole what today's subject, Gauranga Sundar, Sarai is very beautiful to understand. Samartarati Madhanakya Mahabhava and Bhavadasati. Samartarati Gopis also say, I follow Radhika. <laughs> But there will be some snare. Adik snare is Krishna. More with Krishna. And one manjaris is not samartha, no samartha. Samartha means I can do something. They are a samartha, means not capable, but they are capable to be in Radha Hatas. And they don't want to more to do. <laughs> that is sab, um, not Samartha, no Samartha. Ah, Samartha. <laughs> Only he knows to catch the shelter of Radhika and no effort. And she is happy when my Radhika is happy. Bhava is happy. Vanda. Rasa is happy. And Rasa is agnostic. Then Bhava is living. If Rasa is not there, then Bhava will finish. And when Bhav is strong, Rasa will be there. Then I will serve to the Rasa what she wants to do. And when Ananda, she wants to be in happiness. And her Ananda is a lover. He should come, or we have to offer to him. That is the need. I also have one question, Gurudev. Yeah. Um, here is written that even the slightest drop from the stream of topmost transcendental bliss is the stream of topmost transcendental bliss ananda that constantly floats from the fountainhead of all universal causes mahabhava Radha embraced by Maharasa Krishna is keeping the whole world alive. So my question is what is the meaning of alive? Can one meaning of that word be also that if we get to taste even the slightest drop 
of the meeting of Radha and Mohan. Oh, you read again. Um, mm. Even a slightest drop from the stream of topmost transcendental bliss that constantly floats from the fountainhead of all universal causes. Fountainhead is what? Um, Radha, Mahabhava. That Radha. When this is the point, then the love is there. Mm. Bliss is the love who cover a whole in verse. You know? <laughs> Because the whole universe who, who creates, he is bad for that love. So who is fountain bliss here? Of that love, Madanaka Mahabhav, who is the first relisher? The Maharasa. Krishna. Krishna. And when they together, that is Maharaj. Yeah. <laughs> Prima makes Krishna dancing. Huh? <laughs> yeah, say. Prima makes Krishna dance. Ah. Huh? Makes the devotees dance and dance itself. Yeah. All three dancing in one place. You see? This is the Beauty of Prema, Aladni mm -hmm. Shakti Radha. So whole world mad. Some some realize who is mad with Radha, Aladni Shakti, are mad in the material love. Mm -hmm. But the all madness and running <laughs> for love only. That is the only ma uh, magnetic power mm -hmm. to make you to be. Together. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Everything we are doing because of the love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Even I am a God conscious of the, and uh, atheist, but all the servant of the love. Right. Mm -hmm. That can truth everything. <clears throat> that is the mercy of our soul. Mm. There are them. The main item that is to be ascertained from the Vedic scriptures was described in Srimad Bhagavata, which is the essence of the Vedanta. According to the Bhagavata, the limit of attainment is the Mahabhava of the gopis Did in the Rasa Lila. Lim limit of? Attainment. Ah, what is this? Ah, say, read again. Um, according to the Bhagavata, the limit of attainment is the Mahabhava of the gopis in the Rasa Lila. You see, Mahabhava. Gopi, what is Gopi? Who is liberated from the bodily consciousness? <clears throat> they are also want to be Mahabhava servant, mm. attainment, but they have also desired to 
no su paso. Krishna. Tú, please, Krishna. And Manjari. One point, this is the difference. No diversion. Go on, sorry. A human being is unable to advance or to know anything beyond this. Mm. Beyond this, we cannot know. Go to Gita. <laughs> because this is the only thing mentioned. Mm. <laughs> if anyone can reveal anything beyond this, then he cannot be anyone else but the Supreme Absolute Truth, God <laughs> Himself. <laughs> Why Prabhupada say, Sarup and Sarup Siddhi. <laughs> Siddhi means perfection. Will never say, but you have the same power like her. Mm -hmm. You can repeat this line. Mm. A human being is unable to advance or to know anything beyond this. If anyone can reveal anything beyond this, then he cannot be anyone else but the Supreme Absolute Truth, God Himself. Mm. Wow. <laughs> that should be known for sure. This is Nancy, Prabhupada, he was so great, merciful. Sarup and Sarup Siddhi. Nobody <laughs> read that page, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you want to know when you become Radha Dasi? All will be revealed to you. Mm. That confidential Mahabhava, which is not even found by searching through the Rasa Lila chapters of Srimad Bhagavata, <laughs> Manjari Bhav. Uh, Manjari Bhav, sorry. That confidential Manjari Bhav, which is not even found by searching through the Rasa Lila chapters of Srimad Bhagavata, is the merciful gift of Sri Sri Chaitan Krishna Chaitanya Dev. This is the one. <laughs> Why not they tell this fact? <laughs> 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 Manjari Bhav is the merciful gift of Sri Sri Krishna Chaitanya Deva, who is the combined form of Rasa Raja, Krishna, the king of relishers, and Mahabhava. Radhika, the Supreme Love, and its manifestation and preaching has come through the Acharyas who took shelter of his lotus feet. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> Now, Srimati will examine 
if Tulsi has properly learned the songs. This examination is also so wonderful. The cave of Govardhan Hill is like a wonderful temple of play. Swamini takes a veena in her hand and teaches a sweet song. The song itself is endlessly sweet. And on top of that, there is Swamini's own nectarian voice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this sound attracts Shama Sundar, who comes close and stares through a slit in the cave at the beauty of Srimati's form. She is there alone with Tulsi. Her head is not covered by her veil and her fingers that defeat the beauty of golden champaka buds twang the strings of the veena. Along with the strings of the veena, she twangs the strings of Shama's heart. Yeah. How wonderfully her jeweled rings are blazing on her golden fingers. It is as if her beauty and sweetness comes gushing out of her limbs. Shama is enchanted by her lovely nectarian voice and cannot hide himself anymore. <coughs> he approaches slowly and enters into the cave as if he is enchanted by some mantra. Seeing Shama, Swamini at once stops singing, puts the veena away and quickly pulls her veil over her head. Gravely, she says, Shama, are you here? Shama says, What song have you taught to Tulasi? Swamini, what's that to you? Tulsi, let us hear what song you have learned. Tulsi takes the veena in her hand and begins to sing. <coughs> How wonderful is the prowess of Tulsi, the object of Swamini's affection. She has learned the song after one single hearing. It is as if the song takes shape before their eyes. <clears throat> Shama does not hear a song. He relishes Swamini's sweetness. Shama is enchanted and sits down next to Swamini to listen. Tulsi asks, did I pass the examination? Both praise Tulsi, saying, bravo Tulsi, well learned. 
when this vision vanishes, Sri Raghunath laments and prays, Oh, merciful, fortunate Radhe, O oh, mistress of the mountain caves, when will you shyly take only me away from among your girlfriends and bring me to a cave of Govardhan Hill? You will teach me divine songs there that crystallize your rasa in different tunes. Because of your teachings, I will be able to sing the crown jewels of Rasik songs in the assembly of the Yugala Kishore. Yeah. Thus ends the verse 89. Go Bardhan. Go Bardhan. Only it happens in Go Bardhan. <laughs> is your uh, spiritual self desire. Rate, Rate, thank you. Only when I read to you. I'm always there, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Garanga Sundar, I am I am feeling first day I was first time I listened this. Then new realization comes. This is the beauty of Vilapasumandri Radha Rasunari. Mm. Every day you learn more and more. Mm. This is your mercy. I also feel like never before. I think that Ananda is only Krishna giving. No. <laughs> Ananda is Radharani is giving. But today Krishna is giving. Mm. Yeah. How with the Rasa? Mm. Bhava, for Manjari Bhava, what is Rasa? Radha. Radha Rasa, Sudhanjali. It's subjected. Rasa is a Krishna, Raso Vaisaha. Today Rasa is, for Manjari Bhava is Krishna, Radha Rasa. Yes. Yeah. Totally change, my God. And only Manjaris can see, Gurudev, that this embrace of Radha and Krishna is maintaining whole spiritual worlds yeah. and material worlds. Smithy. Mother doesn't see like this. Mother doesn't like see like this. Only Manjaris. Yeah. Even gopis. Yeah. They don't see it. Only Manjaris can see. He by they see Mahabhava also, and they see also Krishna. Yeah. But here, only what thing is looking. Bhav is only looking one thing. If he deviated two things, it will not work. But Samarthara, right? 
Actually, Gopi has Samartha. Means, what do you say in English? Capable. Of. Capable. She is a capable. She can manage two things also at one time. Samartha. Nature. You know? You see, by the Bhakta is very capable. They can manage the material world, the spiritual world, everything. They are capable. They are body. They are working to manage everything. Samartha. But this is two things means no one goal. Then Gopi Bhav. <coughs> So we need desperately association of those who are fixed in their stable, because otherwise we cannot relish the ras of Radhika. Because in rasa stable is including. Without stable there is no rasa. Yeah. And without no rasa, there is no even more stable, but stay. <laughs> What they are doing? So they, are, they will break the roof or what? No, no they cannot do. Cutting the wood, I think. They cannot cut. They have to bring down. And roof will break. You see? Thank you, Kishore Ji. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You Thank you. Guys. Giving me the chance to get the slight drop of this bliss. You're sharing. You're sharing these drops. Mm, Radhe, Radhe. Radhe, Radhe. Thank you very much.